Don't need this. Can't prowl the stage with this. Fucking die. Uh, thank you so much. Um, this is, let it go. You usually kick this off. Take a breath. Looking good. You want me to take over? It's a good fucking color on you. It's a good color on you. Ten oh nine p.m. Hey. Sunday, October 29th, twenty twenty-three. Boys, that game today. I saw that game. Episode number one thousand, part two. <laughs> My Thank name you. is Jonathan Larroquette. This is Seth Romatelli. Hello, Seth. Thank you so much. Do I have ink on my face? Egg on your face? Ink. Ink on your face. Egg on your face. <laughs> no. No? Okay. Um, wow. Happy, joyous, and free. Happy, joyous, wow. and free. Happy, joyous, and free. Happy, joyous, and free. This is um, a lot, y'all. And uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank so, you. Thank so, you. so, 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 so much. Um, we're going to start out nice and easy here. Social media marketers sharing photos of people vacationing in exotic locales or attending events at exclusive venues may actually be driving new customers away, according to a recently published Tulane Curious University study. Twist. Study analyzed it's more called than... called a twist. <laughs> I mean, it certainly turns me off of <laughs> places. Oh, you've been there? Oh, you've been there? Nope. No, no para me. Turks and no cakes? No me gusta. Nope. Turks um, and cakes? He was in, now out. The study analyzed more than 14,000 Instagram travel photos from top influencers and conducted a series of experiments that asked viewers to choose between venues with or without another person in the photo. Across the diverse range of destination venues, the authors consistently found that the presence of others in the photo of a place for special or once-in-a-lifetime events lowered viewers' likings and preference for the venue. <laughs> Quote, when it's an experience closely tied to self-identity, like vacations or weddings, people want to feel personal ownership over the venue. The authors explained, the study published in Journal of Consumer Research is the first to investigate the impact of human presence in shared photos through the lens of what is known as psychological ownership. That is, the feeling that something belongs to an individual, even, that, even when they don't have any legal ownership of it. The study suggests advertisers should be cautious about using Have photos of prior customers in online images of identity. You're going to be... You all right? Yeah, I'm all right. <laughs> you know, it takes me... I mean, I had like crazy jitters on the way out here, but it seems yeah, like... we switched it. The t tables but have turned, Dr. Jones. That's the yin and yang with us. <laughs> yeah. how we do it. He, took, he carries that weight. He looked down know? on that beach, but He's there like, was only, what, there was two footprints? Or yeah, one it's foot, just, whatever it was. It's just one I'm set of J's. One set of house J's. Picked him up. That's it. There was only one set of house J's, and that were mine. Those were mine, homeboy. <laughs> the size of those. What size of those? Like thirteens. Um, so, so yeah, we don't want we don't want to go to places anymore. We know that we all want to yeah. be like this is my spot. But I discovered it. The idea Maui? you discovered Maui. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Identity relevant experiences that we want to see at special occasions as more identity relevant than non special experiences. For example, uh, an anniversary dinner would be a more identity relevant experience than, say, just a typical dinner out. Right. So yeah, you'll see somebody eating somewhere, just lunch, and you'd be like, I want to go there. Yeah. But then you see someone get married there, and you're like, like fuck yeah. that place. Like, uh, talk, uh, yeah. <laughs> like Taco Bell. Yeah, like, it's pretty, pretty whack. It's called a banyan tree, and uh, it's native to, it's Polynesian. I was over in Maui. It's kind of my place. My oh, place. you been? Never mind. Not going. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but we need that. You need a psychological, especially for a wedding. You need that. To I don't, believe that no one else has been. To believe that you're the first person to get married and divorced. You need to believe that. I think, uh, I think there's a lot of things that we do that with that we want to feel like we haven't, we're not, that it's we're not basic. Okay. That's, Yeah. It's the human it need to not be a to basic be on basic. Bitch, <laughs> to be on basic. It's yeah. It's our it's our right. It's our, <laughs> it's our constitutional right to not be a basic bitch. Thank you. Uh, I got I, an eye watch, and it keeps catching me off guard. That's a I don't wild. know. It's like having a fucking Nintendo Switch on my wrist yeah. or something. It's 
just gonna I game don't know what the bit. setting is, but anytime I get like excited, it gets excited too, yeah. or something. It's some type of haptic, I suppose. But well, what's up with the the? I couldn't read the clock on that. It's a futuristic. What is that? It's just a regular clock dial, but without any numbers and stuff on uh, it. Ah, yeah. Just a regular old clock dial at a clock without the numbers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or, or hands. Like a regular. Yeah. Um, God, it was so much stuff. Uh, Harper's Index? Love it. Love it. Light fair. Love it. We're, we're easing in. Love guys. it. Percentage of Americans who know how their parents met. 63% know how their parents met. I know how my parents met. You know how your I know parents, how my met parents met because you're an information maniac. Um, <laughs> you think it's easy... Who, percentage who think it's easier to meet a romantic partner today than it was when their parents met. 15%. 15%. Think, think it's, it's easier? No. Thinks, think it's easier to meet a romantic partner today than it was when their parents met. It's like 98% easier. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, they're mental. Mental. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, 46% think it's harder. Harder. But. <laughs> to share a malted with two straws and get married and get divorced. Now, on top of that, if you yeah. want to just make it super easy, I, I guess. Do. Or eat, you know. Tinder. Oh, right now. Shouts. Tinder announced a $499 per month invite-only subscription. A Tinder month. <laughs> Tinder Select, as part of the premium plan, subscribers can message people they've not matched with. <laughs> perfect. 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 Uh, a month, that's for the, while the most the sought after years. users will see their profiles, Tinder says it only offers the plan to less than 1% of its users. And it considers it extremely, oh, that are considered, extremely it considers unlikable. extremely active. Okay. And that extremely the, unmatchable. <laughs> uh, and that the applications will open up on a rolling basis. Quote, we know there is a subset of highly engaged and active users who prioritize uh, more effective and efficient ways yeah. to find uh, connections. Stalking. <laughs> Talking about blowies, right? Yeah. <laughs> I can't get a date. If I give Tinder six grand a year, will they like force somebody? No, to, no, like, no, 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 no. It's that I'm like, all I do is this. So like, you need to streamline my yeah, game yeah. so I can like get rid of all yeah. the like nefar or like, you yeah. know, the riffraff. Yeah. I just want like straight schedule. Like status. just like a Google yeah. doc yeah. of just like your month, yeah. you know? I think that's what it is, right? Six o'clock dinner, active. eight o'clock drinks. Yeah, you want it. I hear um, the chief product officer of Tinder, Mark Van Rizwick, uh, so we engaged in extensive tests and feedback with this audience over the past several months to develop a completely new offering. If selected to apply, users will have to meet the company's five-point select screen. That means their Ooh. profile must include a verified photo, a biography, five interests, four images, uh, details about what kind of relationship they're looking for. Five interests. Um, fucking, sucking. <laughs> Diplin, Niplin. That's a... Did you say Dicklin and Dipplin, Nipplin? Nipplin, <laughs> slumplin, plumplin. Dicklin and Nipplin. Nipplin. <laughs> uh, select members can also hide the badge just in case they don't want people to know that they've paid <laughs> for this fucking <laughs> six G's nymphomaniac oh, package. Shit. Like stealth mode. Stealth mode who didn't nympho. Stealth, stealth mode activated. Activate. <laughs> Going, submerging in three, <laughs> two, <laughs> boop, boop. Fuck. Uh, the new subscription comes over a year after Tinder's parent company, Match Group, purchased uh, the invite-only dating app, The League, which targets ambitious career-oriented sing like millionaire matchmaker type app, all right? That app costs users $1,000 a week oh, to match on. It's success-inspired Tinder Select. But unlike Tinder, the league uses actual human matchmakers, not just algorithms, uh, that could help subscribers maybe justify the cost of that. Uh, Bro, I mean, you don't really need help justifying the cost of that if you're remotely in the market, I think. <laughs> like, I can pay $1,000 a week. Like, let me see what kind of offerings you got yeah. for this. Like, no, I'm good. Like, I'm I don't, good. I'm, I'm writing it off. Yeah. <laughs> like, don't worry about it. Totally in. Uh, 
uh, anyway, I don't, I mean, I, I think it's for sex addicts. I j- okay. <laughs> before they get hit repa- rehab, like a month before rehab. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like the, like yeah. one last hurrah. Yeah, like. yeah. Bottom Seekers yeah. package, uh-huh. you know. Bottomseekers.com, like. The Lower Companions Group, yeah. you know, yeah. Um, I've right. got, I mean, you have some serious, uh, between, you remember COVID-19, you familiar with that? Remember that? And uh, the strike that we're on, thank you to whoever gave me this uh, legal aid attorney, I don't want to strike, but I fucking will, it says, thank you. Between the SAG strike that's still going on, yes. this, is, this is fucked up, this is fucked up Avatar releases, like, in like a, like a wicked huge way. Okay, remember the movie Avatar? It came out December 18th, 2009. So, Avatar 3 was shot simultaneously with Avatar Dose, The Way of Water. That was released in December. Have not you caught, seen have it. You caught that yet? Never seen got it. that yet. No. Okay. Saw uh, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. I have not seen Avatar. <laughs> have not seen Avatar 2. Turtles Avatar, in the half show. Avatar, okay, so now. Avatar 3 will be released December 19th, 2025. Avatar 4 will be released December 21st, 2029. It's fucking maniac. And Avatar 5 will come out December 19th, 2031. Oh my God. Bro. Well, wait, how? Will, sorry. The, the possibility that we'll be here in 2031. This, the hubris of this man. I can't remember what had... Uh, 2009, it's called Avatar. We're, we're, we were su- but what were we going to... We were supposed to go to escape When we were going to get the last one, only like... He wasn't going to do it like every six months. He was going to just hammer us with them. Or the, the tech it was has one to, after The tech another. has to catch up with his mind. That's the problem. That's the problem. Guys, we might never see this. Too advanced. He's too advanced. Too advanced. Human AI. CAI. That's Cameron AI. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, not what seen a that. motherfucker. 2031, you fucking wish. Oh my God. And I talked so much shit. I was like, that's going to bomb. Did it? It made like as much money as the first one. And like, he was obsessively watching it in the beginning because it kind of had a funny rollout. But yeah, I just, he, it really he was did. doing the computation, but like, he was just yeah, off. I he was him. off. So he was like, it's going to, he's like, it's going to lose money. He's like, yeah, I'm sure of it. It's losing it. money. Trust me. Yeah. Trust me. Week on this three, one. it was like, well, box office mojo four times a day for three months. <laughs> Cryptoing it, like, just keep, uh, I gotta go. Fucking asshole. Fucking asshole. Well, yeah, I won't, I'm not From the argue. twisted I mean, mind. I love you. Of, of Jonathan Larroquette and James Cameron comes Avatar 5 in 2040. You fucking motherfucker. Yeah, I bounced when I got to the, I guess there was a whale. I bounced at the whale. That's, that was about 30 minutes in. You walked out. Oh, I fucking walked out of that. Made a big fuss, big stink. <laughs> Fuck all you for staying and stormed right out. The Brendan Fraser movie? Absolute fucking garbage. The Brendan Fraser movie. The Brendan, the Brendan, the Fraser, Brendan Fraser movie. Georgia the, the Jungle? The whale? Georgia, uh, oh, that was bad too. <laughs> you walked out of the whale? I or walked you walked out, out of all the Brendan whale. Brendan Fraser joints. I know he's beloved, but even... Crossroads of the Flower Moon, even when he popped up in that, I was like, (laughs) I gotta go to the uh, bathroom. Don't want to double dip, but I did hit that Crossroads this week, so fucking you're welcome. Thank you. Uh, In the crowd, when I came on the screen, was fucking electric. (laughs) So, I don't want to tell tales out of school, but when you star in a film and two decades later it gets re-released, it's kind of a big fucking deal. It's a huge deal. It's kind of a big deal. It's a huge deal. You know, there's a lot of films... A lot of actors will be in a film and it might get put into a repertory theater. Like, my movie's in the New Beverly. I'm like, I'm at the Grove, motherfucker. Like, at, like at the mall watching my movie 21 years later. Yeah, a hush fell over the, the, the crowd when I came on. And then... Is the, that because you had been parading around the, yes. in front of them before the movie started? Wearing full costume, just... <laughs> With the clipboard? Yeah. <laughs> Well, as each person walked into the theater, I did the line to them, and they're like, what the fuck did he say to me? You're like, just wait, you'll, you'll get it later. Did he say, fill this in and turn it out over there? And then, so when it happened on the screen, they're like, ah! Yeah, I got it. I got you. I got you, I guys. got you. Um, I'm going to take us back 
to the week that we started Ayad Dude in February. We started February 11th, 2006. How is that possible? How is it possible? And I have a National Enquirer, this is America's Hottest Weekly, from February 13th, 2006, and we share a birthday with Jennifer Aniston, and look who's on the cover of this National Enquirer, Jennifer Aniston. No surprises. No surprises here, like all the heaviest hitters back in 2006. Brad's bust up with Angelina. Yeah, that was fucking, that was shit, that was crazy. Part of this was, part of the reason we were motivated to start the show, to get, I think, to really like some of the things that were happening, happening in this like world at that time, and the, the general temp, Brangelina, you know? Brangelina, the first time we combined the names. What was that? Was that Benifer? Is that the first time? It might have been Benifer. Benifer. Who, who, what did we, Portmanteau, who did we first do say, that with? I, I, I would always say, I would give that to Benefer. Okay. How about uh, Drew Barrymore, Poison Terror? Some dude was like mailing her like anthrax, but it like wasn't anthrax. Duh. Uh, wacko, jacko, sex change, shocker. <laughs> Guess he was over in Bahrain trying to get a sex change operation. That's just what they're telling me. I can't. Uh, Justin to Brittany. If you're unhappy, leave Kevin. This is all applicable tonight. Pretty much. <laughs> Us, this magazine, uh, I don't like this. Jen's tragic miscarriage. Whoa. <laughs> fucking crass. Very. You don't fucking inappropriate. You don't know that. You don't know anything. It's you don't know anything, business. you stupid magazine. <laughs> How Vince is helping her through the secret pain. Vince McMahon? <laughs> <laughs> How the fuck is Vince Vaughn going to help you through anything? Assu let's assume but wait there was a time in the world where they could put Vince on the National Enquirer yeah, and everybody like, ah, would know yeah. who they were talking about oh that's, I mean, that's fucking crazy. amazing oh Vinny Vinny V what what a dog yeah, yeah I guess you're right. right but let me tell you something like if I have a miscarriage the last person I'm gonna cry on is Vince Vaughn's shoulder <laughs> like anybody else get on the fucking subway and just start talking to somebody like what's Vince Vaughn gonna do for you yeah, I guess he was, he was pretty, I guess you could just write Vince. How is that possible? Researchers at San Diego State University. SDSU, really? Um, they are developing space guacamole. Mm. It's a non-expiring dried formula that turns into a proper dip. Oh, that sounds good. A proper dip. Nothing keeps like fresh guac. Jonathan, if I made guac and like walked it to the other room to you, it would be spoiled by the it's time already, It's I already brown. It. It's got a brown layer like, on the top hey, of it. Here. Fuck. <laughs> it's over. send it to space. Oh, so I can't. The aim is to give astronauts a much, the much, some much needed nutrients and a taste of home when they're on missions far above the Earth's atmosphere. Quote, it's a dry, kind of like instant mix guacamole. Mm. So we have to make sure that the color and the texture and the flavor after you reconstitute it are still good. Uh, it also will be infused with algae. So mm. the algae being used can grow in space and they're rich in nutrients, so, uh, which are in short supply far above the atmosphere. They also have lots of antioxidants, which help astronauts keep the effects of space radiation at bay. Currently, the researchers are considering a few different algae for their final recipe based on the color and taste profiles. Some of the algae tasted more like seaweed, with a, more of an umami forward flavor, while others have a distinct fishy or bitter aftertaste. Oh, I love when, I, when my guac's got like a flounder. <laughs> After notes. Many taste jarring and it may, <laughs> it may taste jarring in guacamole, according to the researchers. That's a good review. How's my guac? It's jarring. <laughs> fishy, briny, and jarring. How they, yeah. Like loaded with cilantro. So you like go to dip in and you're like, Thanks, oh NASA. my God, thank you, NASA. Um, but what are they, if it's so like Gross? difficult to, what about, just don't do there's it. There's no mention of what you, Matt Damon, when he was up there, right? He, he didn't make it, he had potatoes or something, right? He didn't make fucking guac. But also, I don't understand if it's this difficult to have something like this, then chips are going to be, it seems like every single thing is going to be oh, like a complete catastrophe trying to make a space version Busted of it. Tostinos yeah, like, cracking like, in like, the Like, oh, you've got to like, you know, 
Yeah, you, you like expose it to that. radiation and then it kind of hardens. But then yeah, you, you ever put Tostino in like a space radiation? chip that they're making, but it shrinks the fucking yeah. chips down like it does the astronauts. Like, um, but how are your scoopables in space? They taste like shit. It's um, it just doesn't make. Uh, it doesn't seem like that's I probably know, the man. first first order of business. Fucking Christ. Um, I got. Uh oh. No, no. I'm just. Just what are you fishing through there? I have a lot of stuff going you got on. got a shitload. Well, it's we're trying to fucking... Can you do a... Can you do an Australian accent? In public? <laughs> like, like right now. No. Like, I'll do a very bad... I could do a very, tonight. very bad one. I, that, okay. I know someone who... We can get there. If anyone can do one, jump up here and you can... Amir like, can do one. Oh, you can? Oh, he's very good at do it. Do one? Uh, NCIS. Sydney. Oh. What? Might have to get Naval Criminal Investigative Service. This is the first international spinoff of the amazing NCIS franchise. Again, with this fucking strike. Are you kidding me? It's like Canadian retread shit on the CW in this fucking garbage. Is that I why? I mean, if NCIS is unwatchable here, what the fuck is an Australian version going to be? All right, NCIS, the original, the OG, has just been renewed for its 21st season. Congratulations. You guys make any money? Money, 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 uh, NCIS Los Angeles just ended after 14 seasons. And now there was in between, okay, then there was NCIS Red, which I didn't know about. Red was a two-part pilot that aired in 2013 during episodes of NCIS Los Angeles. The idea was that John Corbett was going to be, he's going to, this rogue agent who travels the country, NCIS Red, and they were like, uh, no. And so that didn't, it didn't pick that one up. NCIS New Orleans, that lasted seven seasons, that's over. NCIS Hawaii, that just got renewed for its third season. And now it says NCIS Sydney will be released on 10 November 2023. You know I'm mad. That makes me. You know I'm mad. It makes me when they fucking switch it. True story. The posters that we have. I actually this first version I sent to Seth to go have them. I had flipped it on intentionally. I flipped Lost. the month and day. And he it was 29 like 10 eight, 20 23 lost he literally eight seconds after the email went there were one came back and he's like it's awesome can you change the date yeah. it was just it was so fast I was like Seth I can't I'm British yeah, I'm like, like I actually have to, I, I, I have I have to honor I have to the keep queen the date that way rips to a real one. you have to learn how to do procreate and change it yourself yeah, I can't sorry. do it I'm obligated 29 10 20 20 well on 10. 11, 2023. Well, it gets fucked up the system when you're dealing with a month that technically could be a day. It's well, obvious when you're in the 20s, you're fine. But what are you here? It, you yeah. get real, it gets wonky. 10, 11. Uh, 11, it's 10. It's going to be on Paramount Plus Australia, then on Network 10. That, like, they call it Channel 10, down under. That's it. Uh, it's 10 gonna, channel. <laughs> it's going to air on CBS stateside on Tuesday, November 14th. Now, I have just a, it's only four words, this line, but the lead character screams this at, like, the American naval officer that they've sent over. So this is like... You all right? Oh, you can do this? I need you... Holy shit. The, for, like, you're in... This is your... This is your country. This is Ryan, this everybody. Fucking American has come over. I want you to... That line right there. That lat on the bottom. You just can you, you see the bottom four? You tell them words. Oh, hold on! Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry, I forgot about the play. In an Australian accent, right, Seth? Oh. Australian. Yeah. yeah. This is my harbor. <laughs> right, that's yours. You keep that. That's yours. That's yours. I think he said Australian, not Austrian, right? <laughs> It's a Sch Schwarzenegger. It's not a harbor. It's not a harbor. <laughs> Sorry. Fuck. I love you, Ryan. Thank you. <laughs> oh, man. End this fucking strike. Is that why, though? Are they just trying to do anything anywhere? They have to have shit on TV. Oh. Iceland, Iceland, uh, you know, like a fire. NCIS, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Iceland fire. Like <laughs> well, what happens? 
<laughs> well, there's not much going on. It's uh, just a lot of life. All right. Uh, farmweek.com. This is uh, hot off their presses. Oh, yeah. I was, I was reading that shit. <laughs> yeah, you were. Well, well, check this. You'll know what I'm talking about. I'm not, uh, I'm not crazy. It seems like grain bins have always dotted the landscape across the American Midwest. Actually, they've been around for 150 years, guys. <laughs> After working on ways to best store grain at his family farm, it was Illinois farmer, Illinois? Oh, I hate that. Fred Hatch, who built what, it, what is thought to be the first modern silo in 1873. Give it up Today, for Fred Hatch. Sorry? Give it up for Fred Hatch. What's up, Fred? <laughs> Sub hatch. Uh, today, these silos continue to serve as critically important facilities for farm operators to store and safeguard their harvests. But beneath this innocuous structure lies a hidden danger oh. that all too often claims lives. Grain bin entrapments. Ah. They've been on the rise for years. Yeah, so. they have. <laughs> and Purdue University's Agriculture and Biological Engineering Department in West Lafayette, Indiana, has been documenting and investigating these incidents since the 1970s. In its most recent study in 2022, the group tracked 83 cases, including 24 fatalities. And this represents a 40, 41 increase <laughs> over the... What's <laughs> <laughs> happening? <laughs> Stroking. <laughs> This represents a 41% increase. Yeah. So that Jamaica. The 59 entrapment cases reported in just the year prior. But also, aren't they always like, isn't it kids also that fall on them all the time? Well, no, because you don't. I, get, I thought you were just monking around, like oh, you know, you're fucking around with the, with the, not like the putting, not like child labor. Fucking I thought around it with was the like there's also like, yeah, like, yeah, like accidents, horseplay. Yeah, yeah. Horsing. Yeah, yeah horsing around. <laughs> I don't want to think about that because that's... I was just thinking about, like, overall old farmers being like, help, it's so... <laughs> there cannot be a worse way to die. I don't know if that's true. Ah, bro. You, like... So I don't know. I guess you slip on the kernels because you know how they get. And My understanding like, is that you fall in and it's like quicksand and you suffocate from it, but also then the pressure of it also crushes your bones as you sit down. But it down probably it. takes like... 45 minutes, I bet. 45 minutes? I don't know! Oh, oh my God! I was thinking like 45 seconds. Okay, who hears the screams, though, when you're in there? No one. No one hears the screams. Just all the ghosts of every one of your ancestors that have gone in there. All the other... Get out of there! Grain deaths. Fuck Grain that. entrapment. Can't do it. I could barely... I have to get on the elevator in this fucking hotel. I've taken more elevator rides in the last two days than I've literally taken in 15 fucking years. <laughs> Just don't like it, bro. Thing closes and it's just like, well, what the fuck now? Like, and they didn't tell me you have to like, you have to scan your card to make the door go. So I went in, I hit 15, the door closed and nothing happened. And I was like, mm. I almost like, <laughs> literally like everything like fell out of my body. Then I was like, I can't walk 15 fucking flights. I was like, you got to do this. I'm telling my parents or Samantha every time I get on an elevator, just like, if you don't hear from me, you'll know that like... <laughs> Texting. And then I showed her, I was like, a guy in New York got trapped for the fucking... The one in the middle. I'm in the middle one. Yeah. If they... There's a guy in New York, you know this, he was like, got stuck in an, I don't know when it happened, it's like not an urban legend, they have video of him, he's gone in an elevator in an office building for the weekend for 48 hours, yeah, like trapped trap like a rat. There's so a time he's, lapse He's like it. pacing, yeah, and then yeah. I was just like watching that like at two in the morning, like on YouTube, like, <laughs> like 15 flights isn't that bad, I mean, fucking, so that shit is like, I would not want it. No, no. My you overalls wouldn't. just, take my overalls off, try to maybe hook them on something like it just doesn't seem right uh, from last weekend through Thursday December 21st uh, we're going to kick off the countdown to Christmas on the Hallmark channel they have 42 new movies Bro. I mean we knew what was it last year uh, like 39, 40, 39 40 yeah, something like yeah. that uh, 41, one is a Hanukkah movie, so it's actually 41. Uh, uh, now, 
three of these movies out of these 42 have quote unquote working titles. <laughs> you fucking idiots. Well, just does it like Christmas with a kiss. Oh, that's a working title. Yeah, we're not. We're not. We're a hundred. Totally we're not a hundred sure. on it. Could be Christmas with a smooch. <laughs> yeah, I like that tested better. That's better. How about reserving Christmas? That could be what? I don't know. Saving Christmas? Hotel? Uh, <laughs> Hotel Christmas? The secret Christmas? gift of Christmas? It's a word, this is our job here. It's a working title to come up with something. What is this one? The it? secret gift of Christmas. Uh, gifting in secret on Christmas. On Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, this Saturday, November 4th. Never been Christ. It's not Christ? <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Amazing. Never been Christ. A Christmas tale. Home for the holidays. BFFs Naomi and Liz reconnect with high school crush Chris Silver. A complex love triangle forms, forcing them all to take stock of their lives and find the value of friendship. It's a poly Christmas. <laughs> What's going to happen there? Three-way Christmas. <laughs> I'm going to watch that one. <laughs> I'm going to watch that one. How about Friday, November 17th? Navigating Christmas. Uh-oh. Recently divorced Melanie and her son Jason visit a remote island uh, it's for like Christmas. This has to be nautical. <laughs> yeah. Only to find themselves running a real working lighthouse where she connects with the curt but cute owner, played by Willem Dafoe. <laughs> Bitch, that ain't real. There's not gonna be some like Chris Evans in like a, not, like a thick white sweater running that shit. You're getting, Willem, you're getting Willem Dafoe. Yeah. He's got plugs and he's squatting in there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Woman, who oh, child better. Thursday, November 23rd, on Thanksgiving. You won't be able to see this because you'll be leaving for Japan, so I will tell text you. Thanks. The highlights. Catch me a few claws. Is that a working title? <laughs> oh, no. Well, that's no. so bad. Well, wait till you hear what it's about. Right. It's worse. Avery Quinn is an aspiring news anchor. Avery who's, Quinn. Who's finally getting her big break on her station's Christmas morning newscast. Oh, yeah, they always bring the A-team out on Christmas. <laughs> hey, Avery, you're not getting the break. It's Christmas. This is the C-team. I'm going to be on Christmas. Yeah, okay, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Congrats. That's put, but that's put in jeopardy when she captures an intruder, home invasion, in her home wearing a red suit claiming to be Chris, Santa's son. You know Chris Claus. You know that old tale. You know Chris Cross, but did you know Chris Claus? <laughs> He's on his first mission. A night of adventure ensues as they find themselves being pursued by the police as well as some shady characters. Wait, I'm sorry. Is... is, is... They've s Santa's no longer with us, or they've split up the work. Santa killed himself. Fair enough. <laughs> well, he actually so Chris is just putting the pieces back together. Yeah, and he's doing now, his best. I'm Chris Claus. Let me fuck alone. <laughs> Think I wanted this fucking yeah. job? Yeah. Fuck. Along the way, they connect over living in the shadow of their parents, and they inspire each other to go after their dreams. It would be hard to be Chris Claus. In the shadow of... <laughs> in the it's shadow of Living in the Claus. shadow of Santa. Yeah. From the twisted mind of Jonathan Larroquette, living in the shadow of Claus. But Thursday, December 14th, an ice palace romance. A journalist faces old fears when she returns to her hometown ice rink to cover a story. What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> That doesn't mean anything. Unless there was like a quadruple homicide at the ice rink. I gotta go back to the old ice rink to cover the story. With the help of the owner and his young daughter. They piece the crime they back together. They, well, they, they dust for fingerprints first. 
uh, they begin to reevaluate her life's purpose. There's a lot of like widows, widowers, and like they really, that's the, how they play that up, you know? Because I'm sure he's just lost his, his soulmate. How is he going to love again? Are you, far, is, are you saying this is demographic? Well, it's always that, focused. They always have a kid, and there's not a, a significant other around, and it's not because they like got a, we're in a bitter divorce. I'm sure they, you know, I was just in a four year custody battle with this fucking bitch. <laughs> Will you love me? <laughs> yeah, you like run an ice rink in this dump town. Like, <laughs> claws for alarm. Yeah, <laughs> claws. <laughs> Merriam-Webster, uh, America's most trusted dictionary, the it's oldest true. dictionary. It's true. The finest dictionary. <laughs> United States Dictionary uh, started in Springfield, Massachusetts in 1831, 192 years ago. They've just added some new words. Uh, we added some new words, and so they decided yeah, to add them. Culturally, language, again, is a, it's like um, fire. It's almost living half and a million words in this dictionary, some of which uh, we, we, we maybe know or don't know, or at least don't know that. Uh, so you can kind of use these now, like in any any Yo, form, oh, because for you... these are terrible. <laughs> but they're uh, in the dictionary, so they're words, bro. Simp, <laughs> a verb, informal, <laughs> to show excessive devotion to or longing for someone or something. Dad, why why was simping I on simp mom? <laughs> I simp for you, ID. <laughs> Grammable. Oh, God. <laughs> I will save you the definition. <laughs> uh, doom scroll, which I, I was fond of when I first heard it, I have to say, but it just... Like 12 years ago when they <laughs> first... They do take their time with some of these. They do. Uh, to spend excessive time online scrolling, see scroll two, uh, through news or content that makes one feel sad, anxious, or angry. So like the internet. <laughs> So like waking up and like getting on the internet. I got, I, my, my algorithm is currently uh, out of control. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a few weeks and just it's, it's stone cold. It's out of control. <laughs> and I don't know what I've done. You, and I have been trying to take counter no action. Matter what you do. And it's no longer, like, a, it's no longer responding can't. To the thing to the prompts Everything. like it used to. Dude's posting W's. Like literally, Why you should own a cat? like if I saw matter. Justin Bieber and I didn't want to, I like within I just say no more and I don't have to see him anymore. It, yeah. it stopped listening to me like three weeks ago, and it well, is fuck it. That's over wild. Now. The combos that it's throwing at me right now, the craziest combos, the deepest mind recesses, yeah. the deepest wrinkles of my mind. It's gotten into, like the Timu, the Timu ads. That shit's no joke. That's not, I'm not kidding. That's not just for me not like using open searches and allowing it to monitor me. That is actually from it seeing more images within my phone because of the access that it has. The dog one, it, it so sent what? me this ad for a fucking dragon dog that looks exactly like my personal dog. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and the thing that it's referencing, I've never searched, knew nothing about. It's like some like fantasy shit that yeah, I didn't know about. So I was like, now? this doesn't make any sense to me. And then I put the pictures next to each other. And I was like, oh, it's the oh, same yeah. picture. Like, but what's kind but of then mean, everything else is like, you yeah, know, tents, like, thermoses. Oh, oh it's okay, like yeah. guns, microphones, yeah. like, you know, bug out bags, yeah. fucking. It's the yeah. craziest combos. It's like pretty, it knows. Yeah everything at this point totally. about me like but new like i dudes, said it also boobs, has stopped listening like to knives me, so. it's all it's all yeah good, it's pretty, all just right kind of there yeah grammable uh doom scroll edgelord um uh someone who makes wildly dark and exaggerated statements uh as on an internet forum with the intent of shocking others Ooh. Pro provocateurs, uh, like Elon Musk, internet provocateurs. <laughs> I, I mean, you, yeah, or troll is another word. Fucking losers. Loser <laughs> trolls. Yeah. Fucking monsters, children. Uh, finsta, a noun, slang, a secret or 
incognito account on the Instagram photo sharing service. A quiet quit, a verb, to do the minimum amount of work required for a job uh, and then to engage in quiet quitting. So is that one or the other? To do the minimum you amount of work You have to do the quit for, for the quiet to count or you can use quiet living. That's what I do. You just try to just, just, just get by. Does he even come to work today? I don't know. He's just he's so quiet. He doesn't it's, do anything when he's here. It doesn't matter. It's, it's like the tenderest nice little guy, footsteps. Though. Nice it's guy, like never, Nice guy, quiet guy. You sense him, and then you, yeah. he's already gone. He's like, the yeah. warmth is still yeah. there, but the body's the, left the, the room the, already. The Chobani's out the fridge, but I don't see um, him. <laughs> the Chobani got eight. <laughs> yeah. uh, a thirst trap. I mean, you guys, I don't need to walk you through any of these. Uh, goaded. TFW, that feeling when. Uh, cromulent. This what? I did not know, so I will define it. Acceptable or satisfactory. This is informal and humorous. Adjective, is this a reference to something? Does anyone know? Thank you. Wow. Fuck my life. Fuck, man. It's awesome you guys all know that. It's what's fucked up is how alone it makes me feel. It's, that's, <laughs> it has nothing to do with the camaraderie. Or yeah. even if you guys feel the camaraderie, I don't know. My assumption is that you guys all have some type of like eyebrow thing that you yeah. do to each other. So. Secret. And it's I, like fellow Jeep drivers. And I have missed out on yet something yeah. else that I should have not hated on at the time yeah. or whatever I, whatever I was doing to it while you guys were enjoying it. Like hating on it. Eat my shorts. Uh, Fuck mid. Fuck him. Fuck that little twerp. <laughs> uh, mid. Uh, neither very good nor very bad. So-so or meh. Uh, and NGL. Not going to lie. Can NGL and TFW, that counts? That can be... A word? Yeah. No. It's not a fucking uh, word. Well, it is now. It's I mean, one of those other things. According like to most trusted conjunction sources. Conjunction of monads? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what is it called? Compound shishonism? Compoundism? What is it? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, evangelism. What? <laughs> Initialism. Very quickly, I want to... <laughs> Stanfordism. Pull this out just to... It's, again, not as big of a whoop here on the East Coast, but... Again, in Los Angeles, this is a huge deal. That's New England fall foliage. Oh, I think it's a big whoop for anyone who knows. Look how beautiful uh, that said, is. The origins of said the fall foliage. The last year you'll get this. The last year. Masha's here. So. Masha. Yeah. It's Marsha's birthday yesterday. Happy birthday, Marsha. Look at that. Look at that. It's popping. Never not popping. Never not popping, except when it. I said it earlier, she missed, she missed a, a, a massive uh, money grab tonight. With, yeah. If she could have just had about 100 of those sitting just outside. Like, picture of her on one like, side, all the on the other. Out. Yeah. Lights out. Yeah. Um, I'm just trying to stay organized here. That sounded like somebody just got tasered or something. <laughs> don't tase me, bro. Uh, don't tase me, bro. <laughs> Is that in the dictionary? Does that count as a word? Don't tase me, bro. The That's phrases? a word. Does that count? DTMB. D Don't tase me, bro. DTMB. WWJD. DT. All right. This is a little heady. A large team of researchers affiliated with multiple institutions across Europe has found evidence backing up work done in 2007, which suggested that tossed coins are more likely to land on the same side that they started on rather than on the reverse side. The team conducted experiments designed to test the randomness of coin flipping. For many years, the coin toss or flip has represented a fair way to choose between two options. Um, over the years, many people have tested the randomness of coin tossing, and most have found it to be, as, to be fair as expected, provided a fair coin is used. But such tests have only tested the likelihood that a fair coin once flipped has an equal chance of landing on a head or a tail. They have not tested the likelihood of a fair coin landing on the same side up that, it, that was up when it was flipped. Mind blown. <laughs> it is suggested that due to precession, a coin, is that right, precession? A coin flipped into the air spends more time there with its initial side facing up, making it more likely to end up this way as well. 
The difference would be slight, however, just 1%. In this new effort, the research team tested uh, that work, which was done in 2007. The experiment involved 48 people flipping coins minted in 46 different countries Amazing. to prevent design bias. Amazing. For a total of 350,757 coin flips. Each time, the participants noted whether the coin landed with the same side up as when it was launched. The researchers found that the work was correct. There was a slight bias. The found, they, they found that the coin landed with the same side up when it, that was launched 50.8% of the time. See? It's, just, it's literally changes that everything. That betting edge. This changes everything. <laughs> everything. They also found there was some slight variation in percentages between different individual tossing coins. Uh, the team concludes that while the bias they found is slight, it could be meaningful if multiple coin tosses are used to determine an outcome. For example, flipping a quarter 1,000 times and betting $1 each time with yep. winnings of either $0 or $2 should result in an average overall win of $19. What about, what about betting your life? Well, I was just going to say, if we could just... There's no the country NBA, Like, How do we do this to where it would make somebody want to do it? Yeah. <laughs> It's Russian roulette right there, baby. You're playing with your the, life. The thousand times, the nineteen dollars, just everything gets a little jumbled up here. But, that but means everything that's if we ever apply been. Why this theory? Why did we? What has happened here? We've got infested with. Somebody's turned on a light. Uh, a, a, is that? There's like we've got some sort of a, a fly infestation. <laughs> Jonathan, this changes everything. I mean, every the fly toss, infestation. If it's ever happened, we have to. Re, we have to. We can't. All not, you're talking about is football. Yes. <laughs> You have to change everything that's ever happened, any outcome that, that is, we know now that we can I mean, can't, that's about as fair as anything I've ever heard of. 51%? 50.8? 50 51 to 49 is fair? Wow. House wins. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I don't know. I mean, that's, it, it's pretty slight. I'm just trying to think of a, uh, something you could do that could somehow be more effective, more, more proficient at the job. In this situation, a three-dimensional object, you could just be like, it's either going to do this or it's going to do this. I mean, I don't know if there's a better way to do your dumb thing. <laughs> to, play your, to play your stupid game. <laughs> to decide who gets the ball in your dumb game. Yeah. I uh, want to do this betting thing somehow. I want to do this thousand coin toss. Like, I want to watch 350,000 coin tosses and write them down over and over and over again on what it was. How is work today? Not that good. Again. A little maddening. A little crazy. Uh, There's a website. It's called www.brownielocks.com. And we used to go to this website. You? Yeah. Like back in the day. We. Us. The Ooh, we. The collective work? we. Oh, yeah, dude. The collective. <laughs> the collective. Uh. And it would give us, when we used to do like months like, uh, like, this is uh -huh. this week or this month. So uh, today, Sunday, October 29th is National Cat Day. So yeah. But that's, okay. Uh, so just thinking of, thinking of Mizu at home, like wondering where his He's his wondering boy where is. you're at. Where the fuck it's is like, This is my day. <laughs> this guy fucking. It's unbelievable, dad. Had to work late. Thanks. Sorry, son. Son, I had to work. Had to work. For you, that's fucking gravy lovers ain't cheap. That fucking chiroos, little fucking, those things ain't cheap, bro. The month of November, this one's for you. This is National Peanut Butter Lovers Month. I uh, want to so, update you guys on the fly infestation. <laughs> I'm being eaten up here. Uh, no, um, thank you all for your insane outpouring of support for my peanut butter love and my Your journey my journey with palm oil uh and palm oil alternatives saga i have never gotten i have never said anything on this show in 17 years that has elicited so much reaction <laughs> and teddy's is i don't know if you guys whoever knows uh, teddy's was the resounding peanut butter that just came back over and over and over again cannot get it where i live but I will let you know that it was like a resounding, like everyone was like, dog, like 
come to our world like you know yeah. like flip it upside down stick it in the cupboard for three days then yeah. flip it back over throw it in the fridge Smack but it's it up, like flip it rub it down yeah teddies so as soon as i get my hand on some teddies i'll i'll, I'll, I'll i'm gonna be giving up my Fuck, my bro. palm oil based peanut butters oh yeah dude no Brought more orangutans on leashes teddies. or whatever first week of november november 5th to november 11th national drowsy driving prevention week oh <laughs> thought it was like sleep first drive alert so many times i try to get them to just crash at the crib just get on the couch i don't want you never Can't once send you back in <laughs> Never shuffles Never me out once of there so to let me stay <laughs> yeah. the night after a late show. Hey, when you not out, once has it crossed his mind, <laughs> yeah. much like, less has, yeah, it, like, has he uttered the hey, words. Hey, what are you uh, getting out of here? I've left out of there at yeah. like. Yeah. Like sun up, like yeah, and never once. I don't think it was ever on his radar. Like this guy's getting sleepy. Yeah, and like, this is when I was like house and tall boys and shit in yeah. there. I mean. I definitely drove drunk like, home man, from that fucking house man, more I'm, times than I care to God, admit. I'm crazy tired though right now. Huh? <laughs> Jeez, Seth, yeah, it must really, be well. really just pining away. I'm just waiting for a sleepover. Anyway. <laughs> Seth never would let me have a sleepover, so I decided yeah. I have to start coming over and do the podcast. <laughs> yeah. um, no, but uh, don't do it. I do it a lot. Don't do it. You must have some sort of on the Mercedes, some driver assist that gives you a little. Uh, yeah, it tells me it shows me a picture of coffee and like mocks me, and I oh, then fuck. take my eyes off the road for like 90 seconds while I dismiss it, and then dismiss all the other warnings about my low tires and shit, and then yeah. you know Just get like, back to my Spotify playlist yeah. or whatever. But <laughs> I do that drive a lot. It tells me after about an hour of driving, it start it starts asking me and. Uh, yeah, no, I, it's, it's dangerous and I like, used to do like, it a lot and I don't do it anymore. Like, now that I'm an old person, like, I, don't, I don't do it anymore. Like, are you cool, bro? You're like, I It am. says that. It says just attention, take a break, and then like, whatever. I just, I will get out of the car, walk around, I'll do shit. But like, I do that drive back and forth in the desert enough, as does my girlfriend, that it's kind of not funny anymore. Where I used to do it a lot in LA and it's just, it's dangerous. Even when I was sober, I would just be exhausted in driving and just like, you know, leave Dee's house, drive back from the west side and just be like, this is not, not cool. Um, <laughs> shut up. I forgot. <laughs> I forgot I was on stage for a while. I was talking to Seth here. Um, David Willard has been checking the grounds of Chicago's Lakefront Exhibition Center for Dead Birds for 40 years. On a recent... What was he, what was he doing? He was sorry? Doing, he David was, Willard has been checking the grounds of, the, of Chicago's Lakefront Exhibition Center for Dead Birds for 40 years. It's not called the Center for Dead Birds. Okay. <laughs> and is, is he employed there or he's just a dude that... <laughs> That's David. He checks for dead birds He works for the Center of Dead Birds. Yeah. <laughs> he actually doesn't. David... He works for the no, no. Dead Birds Society. I don't know what David does, but he comes every morning and he checks for dead birds. It's David. On a recent morning, he found something horrible. What? Hundreds of dead birds. Why? Hundreds of dead songbirds so thick that they looked like a carpet. Nearly 1,000 songbirds perished after crashing into the McCormick Place Lakeside Center's windows. Looked like a carpet. Like, look at that. Oh, the beautiful rug. Look at that. Oh, let me just, I want to, oh, no. It's a crazy visual. It actually, I, it is. It was. I guess somebody left a beautiful rug outside. What? Are you fucking stupid? It's like a hundred dead birds. A thousand. A thousand. My bad. Nearly 1,000 songbirds perished after crashing into the McCormick Place Lakeside Center's windows. The result, according to an avian expert, of a deadly confluence... What's happening? Switching out? For me or him? Sorry. Um... The result, according to avian experts, of deadly confluence of prime migration conditions, rain and the low-slung exhibition hall's lights uh, and window-lined walls. It was just like a carpet of dead birds, as Seth said. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't, Jonathan, a, I can't a even A beautiful use this rug mic. of dead birds. This mic is cold and dead to me. At I the can't windows. Even. This is not my mic. Feels wrong. You know how I am about it's my like, mics. <laughs> is this a shore? Because I only use shores. Um, it was like a carpet of dead birds. Yes. <laughs> Again. A beautiful, beautiful carpet. Um, God, look at that. 
oh, the tapestry on that is so ornate. So he, so Whoa. Seth Willard, who's a retired bird division collections manager at the Chicago Field Museum, where his duties included preserving and cataloging the museum's collection of 500,000 other birds that have died there. <laughs> um, no, 500,000 bird specimens, as well as searching for bird strikes as part of migration research. Quote, a normal night, we would see maybe zero to 15 birds dead. It was just a what's that, like a doormat? <laughs> 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 oh my God, that is a beautiful doormat. Oh, I'm not again. I'm Got me again. I'm so stupid, I'm always getting duped. <laughs> like, <laughs> every day, dog, you know you're gonna, this is what you do. Oh. It's just a job, it's why is it every day like, ah! oh my God, I, uh, every day. So, <laughs> fuck. Fuck me. Uh, a normal night, we'd see maybe, <laughs> maybe a placemat's worth. That's like a flock. They call that a, yeah. It was just kind of shocking. A table It's like a coffee something. table book, so. Uh, um, it was just kind of shocking uh, and a weird outlier to what we normally experience. Um, now, the morning after the discovery, in 40 years of keeping track of what's happening at McCormick, we've never seen anything remotely on this scale. Now, researchers estimate hundreds of millions of birds die in window strikes in the United States each year. Scientists with the Smithsonian Conservation Biology Institute and U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service released a study in 2014 that put the number between 365 million and 988 million birds a year. Bro! It's... The fact that some of these like bougie architects also know full well that this is going to fucking happen when they erect these buildings, they are told ahead of time, and that everyone is still like, it's worth it, it's an amazing structure, like, <laughs> is beyond comprehension to me. But did you say like 900 million birds? Did you yeah. say like a billion birds? Yeah. That's a lot of birds. It's the man. most birds. That's the most <laughs> carpets. It's so <laughs> many. It's, it's like a... It's like it's, a yeah, wall-to-wall -wall carpeting. <laughs> Far as the eye can see. So there's so many birds that every year a billion die, and everywhere you still are like, well, look at all the birds. <laughs> I don't know. Want, where, are you, where, are you going, where are you going with I don't this? want birds to die. I want all the birds to live. I but want, you but just are like, as far as the, the numbers go... Number, you can kill a billion a year and still be like, oh, there's so many birds. That's great. That's I, cool. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, that's Good for wild. the birds. Yeah, good for the birds. Some fucking. of them. <laughs> Not most of Not them. Not a billion oh, no, of them, yeah. but the other ones. Wow, man. Uh, so that makes you feel all right about it. <laughs> no, I just, I can't believe that that's a big number. Counting out a billion dead birds would take, a lot, that's a lot of Davids, just like. A lot of Willards. Yeah. It's insane. Um, episode 523 we did in August of 2016. Because so, we've been doing this fucking show for almost 18 years. Um, for some odd reason, this thing, I think about this like all the time. So I'm going to put it in the thousandth episode. It's stupid. I don't, do I know anything it's, about it? It's stupid. It's just something, I don't know why I... Cecil Fielder, he's a baseball player. He played 15 seasons, primarily his best years were with the Detroit Tigers uh -huh. from 1990 to 1996. He had a son named Prince Fielder. Prince Fielder played 12 seasons in Major League Baseball. His best years were 2005 to 2011 with the Milwaukee Brewers. So you have a father and a son, both play baseball. Beautiful thing, beautiful thing. Both the father and the son finished their careers with 319 home runs. How the fuck is that possible? That's cr it, it's crazy. I don't I think about it all the time. All the time? Like Roman Empire style. Like Roman all Empire. All the time. All the time. I drive around and I'm like, how the fuck is that possible? The two, the, the two we finished with the same number, father and son. Okay, so. Prince's last year, it was in 2016, he played with the Texas Rangers. He had 326 at-bats. He hit eight home runs that season. He hit his eighth home run July 6th in Fenway Park in Boston, Massachusetts. He definitely wanted to hit another home run, right? He didn't, 
He didn't get to there and be like, this is beautiful, Papa. <laughs> he desperately wanted to get one more home run. I mean, unless it's like, I mean... Right? It just... Uh, my understanding know. is that it's always one of those... Like, if I... If, if that happens, that means, I don't know, like people that are able to play professional sports don't have the same mechanisms that like, like I would do that, but I also don't have what it takes to be a professional athlete. And whatever that is, I think also makes it to where you're like, I don't give a fuck. I want to beat my dad. Like I want more than he had, not the One same. More. I want, One you know, more. that I don't, I don't. So yeah, I guess you would well, did think. Did he think it was, oh, this is so beautiful. I'm going to just like wait, get up to bat and just go wait, like this for like how long the rest of the game. Sorry, and like, oh, I missed it. Shit. How many more at bats did he have? I don't know. He had, he played seven more games. Oh no, he might have. He, he might have just been like, I'm good. He, no, he tried. I know he did. I need video evidence of every at-bat of those last been, like, seven games. Limp wrist. Or him, yeah, no, taking like crazy cuts like, <gasps> Fuck! I hate you, Dad! Fuck! Trying to pinch. 15 years in 12 seasons, and they finish with the same amount of home runs. I don't know. I think it's fucking crazy. I mean, it's wild. It just seems like there's uh, so many other Spiritual Awakening Holistic Expo. Okay. This weekend, Saturday, November 4th, this coming weekend in Sterling, Virginia. That's only four hours south of here. All right. Well, think about that. It's going to be at the Double Tree by Hilton. Oh. That's... Ten minutes from Washington's Dulles International Airport. Oh, you're right there. Fly in, fly right out. Right in. Live, in person, ancient, intuitive energy healer, Bonnie Mazaris. She's there, dog. Bonnie Mazaris is going to be... Next weekend, if I told you Bonnie Mazaris was going to be four hours away from you, would you die? Because I'm telling you that. She's bringing to the... Double Tree by Hilton, <laughs> room 621. <laughs> Her proprietary healing arts therapy, known simply as Yuriki. Wait, Yuriki? Like, Yuriki? Yuriki. Like Reiki and Eureka? Y O R I Q I. Yuriki. I'm sorry, one more time. Y O R I Q I. Oh, sorry, okay. Yuriki. Completely off, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, Yoriki. Oh, oh, why yeah. didn't you say? Oh, Bonnie Mazaris. No, I thought you said, I thought you said Betty Mazaris. So Whole stupid. different technique. So stupid. <laughs> Combining traditional restorative yoga poses with EFT, emotional freedom technique, which is tapping. You know you're tapping. You have to. You have to hit those meridians. That's what I saw you doing when you're in that lotus position, tapping before that first show, clearing energy. Kirtan call and response, response chanting, my favorite. That's like light language shit? That's, no, that's just a, a lot of like hooting and hollering. Right. But with drums. Oh, but just like emoting. Emoting. It's going to penetrate the blocked energies. Intense body movement vibrational modalities combined with beta wave sound bath meditation with essential oils. Good luck. How'd that treat you? Amazing. Amazing. Uh, yeah, so... Just <laughs> beta cuck sound yeah. bath that I got. Beta cuck <laughs> sound bath with essential oils. Soy boy beta cuck sound bath that I got at the Double Tree in Virginia. Yeah. It's about 10 minutes from Dulles? Are we so fucked that, like, this is just... It, we're all just gonna... We're gonna have to, like, go here to like this extreme or because everything is so fucking fucked. You mean like, to the extreme of going to these places to try to receive these healings or to try to do this ourselves and sell this shit to people because no. that's the only way to survive in the world <laughs> no. is like I mean talking like, crazy sh fake it's gonna, shit. It's just going to get so bananas buck wild that we're going to be like, God, Bonnie Mazaris was fucking she was right. right. She was fucking Your right. Your really changed my fucking life. I mean, yep, maybe. I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm, I'm scared of anything that, any spiritual movement that its inception that not is leading. at inside of a double tree hotel room. I think yeah. anything that the tech, proprietary tech well, that is being not. developed and established and, and in the double know, tree, at any the double, double tree, yeah, like, in any airport double tree. Revealed for the tree. first time inside of a hotel room yeah. sounds. But little, that's where healing, healing can happen anywhere. You can't like limit where the healing can happen. No, you should That's what Bonnie no, told me. That's, so Bonnie told me the Double Tree Orlando two years ago. 
with a prototype of this yeah. bad boy that she's rolling out. <laughs> Yo, Jiqui had a different. It was like Kumquat yeah. Seven or whatever she was working on. Uh, um, what? I got a. Uh, I got those those uh, COVID nineteen tests from Binax now by Abbott, government Biden. My boy Sleepy Joe sent me a couple new ones. Listen, I don't want to get I don't want to get fucking political up in here, but like y- the expiration date on this fucking thing oh. is July sixteenth, twenty twenty three, yep. and then they're like, go online. It's, there's a new expiration date, and now my expiration date is like Valentine's Day weekend, twenty twenty four. Like, no, no, no. Well, I mean, right? Yeah. Can you do that? Well, you can with a fake vac. You sent it to me. <laughs> you sent it to me. You told me it Again, expired. Again, it's a pandemic. You told me it expired, like, hey, right after 4th of July, you better test up. Then you sent it to me in the fall, and you're like, you're cool to Just Valentine's Day. I don't like that. I don't like expired shit. You know that. No. I'm always, I don't play that. Anything. No, I know. Hummus, day late, done. <laughs> They're playing with my life over here. Uh, yeah, well, I don't know what to tell you. It's fucking crazy. <laughs> uh... Did you have to ask them, or they just you got on? A, they just showed up at your house. Oh no, I was on there like oh. that day, like. Oh, because he yeah. was like, you can ask us for more. Yeah, yeah, cuck. <laughs> they're old, yeah, but they're old. Cuck. <laughs> we'll send them to you. Yeah, you're like <laughs> stupid. Like I want three. Like why? But can you? You can't change an expiration date. Like Sorry. I said, brother. Sorry. Uh, I'm off on my months, but Nevada casino winnings. For September of 2023, okay. I'm, I'm, listen, it, we're at 30 consecutive months of $1 billion in stolen money. The, the report, today's the 29th, it usually doesn't come out until the 30th. I am going to go out on a limb and assume that if they've made a billion dollars a month for 30 months, that September will make 31. Um, just, just. Where the fuck is the 31 billion fucking dollars that we gave this fucking state? Well, it's a little bit harder to ask that now that there is a giant, like, fucking planet the sitting sphere? in the middle of the city that the, costs, what, the, like... The sphere costs $29 million? No. We, so Darren Aronofsky can show a fucking movie there? We had to get Aronofsky. I, I it costs $29 it cost, billion. I think it costs a lot more than that. Well, oh, it couldn't. I think it did. No, it's just a TV. It's just a big TV. You can get a big I TV mean, I'm now. I'm saying from... that's some of it. I'm not saying that's all of it. <laughs> You're not saying it's all 31 billion. It's probably 25 to 26 billion on the sphere to and go now, to a you know, U2 concert and see Joshua Tree put in the back. Have a worse fucking night. <laughs> yeah, the tickets there were $900. They sang the album and then they put up images of like Palm Desert on a huge screen in 18K. And I'm 50 and sober. Did you, oh, you were tripping and it was awesome? No, no, I'm sober. I'm like into cool shit like that. So you didn't, you didn't take mushrooms. You went to see U2 and they played U2 songs? And then you like sang them? Brutal. You better be singing them if you're there sober, man. Brutal. Fuck. If you, you ain't imagine? fist pumping, Can then you, you are like, what are you doing there? You Sunday better be bloody high fiving like <laughs> Sunday Monday. <laughs> Sunday, <laughs> Sunday, Monday. <laughs> Fuck, bro. <laughs> that was twenty six billion though for yeah. the sphere. Okay. At least like a couple At billion of it probably went billion. into the, the long game on Fuck. that one. Uh so I mentioned on the, the, first, the first part of this, I did go mining through uh, some of my old, my old writings to try to see if there was, try and see if there was anything that I hadn't taken uh, and used uh, for you know, cheap laughs uh, at another point in this, this <laughs> show. And I don't think I've ever read this, but I, I'm not. I don't not, think so. I, yeah, Seth's not, sh- not. It doesn't think so either. But if I have, and if I have, it's certainly been a long time. And um, it is, it is written in in my in my own scrawl, and I can do a bit of carbon dating uh, as a result, <laughs> and can confirm that I believe uh, I was probably newly sober at this point. Uh, so, still dreadlocked. 
Dreadlocked and sober, the Jonathan Preston Larroquette story. Uh, so, I mean, my world was maybe a bit upside down if it hadn't been already uh, being convinced I was a white Rastafarian prophet. That then this now I have to figure out how like Jaws' plan for me is is through the through the the works of <laughs> AA or whatever. I, so without further ado, fuck, bro. I think I'm 17. Just so you know, 16, 17, somewhere right there. From the hand of God, it was molded. Its permanency, the cosmic drive to pass the test of time, one way or another. Its makeup is locked in a rock hard, unpenetrable seed. <laughs> Leaving us only to accept our slavery to it. We make movements beyond our own volition that su surpass our own volition. <laughs> we hold vigil for a belief uncertain to us, much less the others. <laughs> it is caked on our fingertips like tar. We travel knee deep in it. It confides in us and we in turn extend our limits. All we know is that we have divine love and men we are no longer when we are in its midst. <laughs> this is fucking crazy. Our weakness, our strength. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. Oh, oh, wait, wait. Chill out. Not so wait, fast. Wait. Not so fast, everybody. What did you mean, like? And, and it's how apropos, in brevity or length, <laughs> it has no pertinence for a nanosecond. And then again, we are left with just attempts to retrace the steps taken that arrived us onto that initial plane. <laughs> a direct line between us and something so much more. I mean, for me, I have no other option. Head first, I've innocently jumped. <laughs> As of now, I'm only learning to tread water. But one day, I will seize it. Uh, and chances are, it will once again liquefy and seep through the imperfect seams of my fingers. I can't. I can't. <laughs> um... Wow. Does anyone have any idea what I'm referring wow. to? Wow. Because I've racked my brain. Wow. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> well, there's a lot of imagery. That it's, 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 yeah, it's, 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 it's a conflicted person here because what's going on is like, I think what I'm talking about is just like, you know, just obviously like a psychedelic world that I'm no longer allowed to, to deal with and so I'm sort of like superimposing whatever programming I'm getting at that point from like the God program of getting sober and all that stuff but it's a very it's a very interesting because this is still very much that person but no longer on drugs <laughs> like it's that guy though <laughs> yeah, oh it's that guy for sure, 100%. I mean, <laughs> ringing with that guy. Still have the locks. Still locked, okay, and also right. older than I should be talking like this. Yeah. <laughs> or dr writing like this. If you actually yeah. look at the writing, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's weird. <sighs> like, it's like fucked up tag writing, but not, not even a good version of that. Um, but yeah. It's all. fucking... It's amazing. I try. It's amazing. Um... We mentioned on the last show, and it should go without, it should be mentioned again that when we started the podcast in February of 2006, that the forever, the forever stamp didn't exist. Yes, so it did not. Pretty, pretty, so no iPhone, no, no forever stamp. No forever stamp. I was on the USPS website, like one is wont to do. Um, peep this job. Tell me how good this sounds. USPS career opportunities actively recruiting right now for a rural carrier associate. In this role, you're just chilling. 
driving a vintage Jeep, wrong side of the fucking road. You're delivering, you're collecting packages along rural routes in rural areas, Monday through Saturday. Uh, you might be required to use a personal vehicle. I wouldn't want to do. Maybe get a station wagon, maybe buy, go to a used car lot, buy an older station wagon. But the idea is this per position's ideal for candidates that enjoy... Drifters. Drifters. <laughs> offenders or such who enjoy being outside don't want a boss up in their fucking grill all day i want people poking around in my, uh, business. my business on my pb and j's and my little thermos and cooler but can you imagine that getting rural just moving out and just doing that and just hitting those like old-timey like street mailboxes where you're just like yeah monday through saturday sundays your day God's day. You probably maybe go for a hike because you're living somewhere like in the woods. You don't got to fucking answer to nobody. You're just doing the damn thing. Do that for about 35 years and fucking retire. No bullshit. Yeah. No, no fucking Eureka. No fucking, you don't got to, you're on your own. This is my fucking, this is my own spiritual path right fucking here. So fucking nice. I don't know, man. Really? It's just all that rural stuff. When you're that rural, but there's still people, you got to well, be more rural or, or less rural. Like the, the, if you still got a mailbox, but I got to like drive up a trail to get there, you're fucking Infowars. Okay. I mean, straight up, like Infowars, like hundred okay. percent. Okay. Like it's the, it's an elevation thing or Only something. Only doing like what tactical gear. Like, yeah, to just, like, there's something about the yeah. yeah. Like tack yeah, fire roads. And... There's some combination between okay. them. You know. Okay. Switchbacks and and Infowars bumper stickers. Um, I don't know. I don't have... No. Nope. Let's see nope. what time it is. I don't know. You want to no, I can't look at that. I don't understand that. <laughs> How does this work? Is it a new iPad? It... Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. It is a new iPad. Thanks for noticing. <laughs> <laughs> I actually bought the iPad in a pinch. And... They roped me into the watch, and, uh, and I got, I felt like a chump, <laughs> but I did it anyway. You did it. Looks good. I was a little too far down the road when I realized it was like kind of like a T-Mobile hustle, and what I worried about, of course, is that they were going to think I didn't have the money for it, and Jesus that's why I was backing Christ. out of it. So if the sales associate... I was like, that's the only one? You don't have the 256? Oh, okay, just the 32 gig? Okay, go for it. Yeah. I guess if it's in stock. I mean, I don't want to wait for it. I kind of need it now. I got a show in New I York. I kind of need it now. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, like, what time is it? I can't... <laughs> no clue. Yeah. Nothing. No. Haptics. Unbelievable. Uh, I have a dear Amy here. I want to ask out. You need to... Uh, Devastated needs to ask you a question. I'll do my best. Do my best. Dear Jonathan, 21 years ago, I met my best friend. We oh. lost touch after high school and then found each other again about 10 years later. We picked up right where we left off. We had a falling out, and in the midst of the argument, she insulted my abilities regarding my passion. This was like a stab in the heart. It was so devastating to me that I questioned all the progress that I've made in the past few years. As a lover? Uh, Is that what we're talking about? Uh, well... Did she say you don't she, fuck good? It's, she insulted... Is that what she said? She insulted her abilities regarding her passion. I don't know what that passion is. You think it was as a lover? No, it's, a lo it's probably a little heavy-handed on my part. Such though. a passionate lover, and she... Oh, so, no, she's then, she's saying the work that she's done, so that she's not talking about pounding it out. She's, <laughs> no, talking about she's actually talking about no. passion, talk, depth, talk. Uh, yeah, whatever. I can't seem to forget it. Even though she admitted she had only said it to hurt me. We have since mended our friendship. She thinks everything is fine now, and I don't know how to tell her that I really haven't gotten over it. I feel like I cannot talk about my passion. What the fuck is that? Are these people having sex together? Are they friends? I think they're best friends. Grew apart, came back together. In that time, one of these people developed some fucking passion, passion for something. Hacky sack, juggling, I don't know. 
And this person sort of like la- mocked oh, it. Oh, so you laughed. believe that passion is a thing? Passion, th- th- there is something like in theater. There. Yes. <laughs> yes. And that this friend sort of laughed at that or just didn't think. Oh, like yeah. belittled my passion. I think so. I feel like I can't even talk about my passion with, with this person anymore. And it's, it's a, the passion's a huge part of my life. The hacky sack. What's next? <laughs> What's next is you could tell us what the fuck your thing is, and then so like, we can either you laugh at you or be a like stranger, and then just be like super weird and vague like that. Like it's already anonymous. Like what the fuck is the problem? Just tell just me tell what you're fucking what, into, and we'll either laugh at you or say, "Hey, your friend's being a jerk." The friend's a jerk. Either way, um, the work I've done on this passion, <laughs> a study by Spanish researchers, researchers suggest same-sex behavior among mammals, is that us? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Especially primates. It's you and I. <laughs> just us. <laughs> is not only common and adaptive, but supports social relationships and reduces conflict. The findings represent the broadest systematic documentation yet of same-sex behavior in mammals, several researchers not involved in the work have said. Well, then shut the fuck up. You're not in love with <laughs> Homosexuality is president, is president, is president. <laughs> I have something to tell you. Homosexuality Sleepy is president. J- Sleepy Joe's queer. I didn't, oh. I didn't, I didn't tell you that. I, un- I know on good authority. Homosexuality is Sleepy president. Sleepy Joe's a queer. <laughs> Homosexuality is present, it's widespread, and eternal said John Rosegarden, an emeritus professor of evolutionary biology at Stanford University. If you somehow manage to exterminate it from one species, it would re-evolve because it's adaptive. That's how fucking, that's how down we are. Same, yeah, just down to clown. Same-sex behavior, similar to uh, activities like grooming, nuzzling, and sleeping together, promotes cooperation, and it also helps the survival of the species. It's Mutual- sort of like the game I played when I was a kid that I talked about in the episode yeah. earlier, right? It's physical. You wanted to get It's kind of like contact. diffusing, diffusing tensions yeah. and stuff. You'll hear that this week. It's a- For those of you who weren't here, I, when I was a child, I had a game I used to play called I Got You Where I Want You with two of my neighbors. I'm just going to do this real quick. Uh, okay, what Aaron, is it called again? What is it called again? What, I the, got you Aaron where lives I- next door to me just to the left. Uh... And Peter lives across the street on the other side of the courtyard. And basically, we would take turns. I would pin them down. Or we would wrestle. And when I would win, I would hump their leg. I referred to the game as I got you where I want you. I believe I even told my mom about a game. But I didn't fill her in on the rules. But also in recounting the tale, I also realized that I never filled Aaron and Peter in on the rules either. So I'm pretty sure that's why they wanted to stop playing <laughs> my game. My invention that I was champion of well, was because I think they got hip yeah. to my jive. Yeah, one of these, one of these, we never saw a rule book to a handbook to this game. Aaron's mother, I climbed a tree and humped the tree while she undressed. And I think she was the first naked woman I ever saw in my life. You climbed the tree to see her nude? Or you climbed the tree and then no, inadvertently saw no, her nude. I was watching her from the ground. I saw her upstairs. What's the statute of limitations? She took her shirt off. That. And I was like, I've got to figure out. I've got to. I got to climb gotta a tree. Pretend I'm doing something. <laughs> and the height. So yeah. I went up. Because, you know, I was just playing army or whatever, yeah. you know, like. Just booby trapping if yeah. my dad comes out and asks me what I'm doing or something. No, I'm just. Uh... But I just was, you know, like wrapped around a ficus <laughs> limb. Yeah. Wow. It's a sexually charged time, but yeah. what I would say about that yeah. is that there was nothing remotely gay about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that there was nothing remotely innately hetero or homo about what charged me up back then <laughs> you know that i was i was i was malleable yeah. 
as I believe a lot of us are or were or whatever, and that, you are know, you? our choices, personal and societal, our programming, a lot of that does weigh in, but in the famous words of my father when I was a teenager and I went to him and asked him these types of questions and I said, Dad, you know, I have an idea about us and the way that we're born and that society sort of informs us and in who we're supposed to be and sexuality and I kind of think that heterosexuality and homosexuality both seem a bit extreme that maybe we're all sort of bisexual and that we just kind of get kind of maneuvered in other ways as our life goes and he just gets he's, he just is like ah whatever Jonathan he's like once is curious twice is queer <laughs> so I think you could live by either advice, <laughs> it's a, um, it's a, and and both are tr both both are true. <laughs> um, uh, so, uh, yeah, thank you for that. Thank you, Aaron. <laughs> thank you, Peter. Thank you, mom. Thank, thank you, dad. mom. Thank you, dad. Thank you, Aaron's mom for opening my eyes, and my mind. Uh, thank you, all of you, for making your way yeah. here. Where, uh, yeah, Jared, wherever you are from. Episode one thousand, part two. Um, we'd be remiss not to thank, um, you know, as I did on the first show, our mothers, our fathers, our, our brothers, our sisters, our siblings, um, and um, I guess just, I think, I just, I want to do more of this in, on a more regular basis so that we can maybe check in with each other and maybe not have to go to such great lengths, both you guys and us to try to do this and continue to do it. It's been too long and I don't, I don't like, I don't like it. Uh, as far as the, you know, as far as the future of podcasting. Um, you mean the art form of podcasting? Yes, uh, as I see it. Um, no, as far as the future of the show, you know, please stick with us. Please, you know, tell your friends to listen. Do the Patreon if you haven't, and uh, allow us, you know, over these next thousand episodes or whatever, some breathing room as we try to figure out what to do uh, about this thing now that we are uh, kind of facing it as these, you know, almost 50, 50, almost 50 year old men, and w hopefully, you know, can do it so long as the knees will still like, work or whatever, you know, get us up here. But, um, it does mean an awful lot to me, and I know it means an awful lot to Seth, and I know it means an awful Thank lot you. to some of you. So uh, I just... Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, we're going to go to the Globe Bar. It's across the street. It's at 158. Say that again. The Globe Bar. It's a, like across the street, 158 East 23rd. So if you want to go hang out and say hello and although my dad I think it was on Yelp and he was one of the reviews was like the bartender stole something from my friend's purse so just be like it's not on me um, I sent you but yeah I mean uh, we please you know we will now that we're done done with this I mean the first one we had to kind of go and regroup we will be downstairs for a second but as, as he said you know they are gonna kick us out of here very shortly so um, listen to them. Uh, thank you to everyone at the Gramercy listen. for being so <laughs> accommodating it. and, uh, you know, also, you know, a lot of you guys know that, you know, we lost, we lost Jeff, uh, our editor, to a job a while back. Uh, our, our new guy is actually here tonight. He's been running around filming this thing, which we will try to group together and, and get up to you guys. Uh, Obviously, I'll get the audio out, but uh, I want to thank Eric profusely for making his way out here from Los Angeles for getting this camera rig together. Also, Natalie and Marissa, who are downstairs running merch. And then, of course, to like, you know, all the people, Nick and all the people that kept the website going, and Jeff and all the people that have helped us out on this along the way. And, um, yeah, I just... Uh, Thank you. Thank you to everybody. Thank and you so much. Obviously, thank you. What do you... Th I think, uh, think we're out of here. So lucky. Thank you so much. Seatbelts. Seatbelts, y'all.